Krishna more chadi ve. One Rukmini, a one Rukmini Devi, she was fanning to Krishna. Then Krishna just laughing and joking and saying something. Hey, Rukmini Devi, you are very beautiful. And <coughs> all the prince, they also like to marry with you. If you want, I also have arranged your marriage ceremony with Sisupal. Uh, and that time Rukmini Devi, she was fanning to Krishna. Then Rukmini Devi's hand started shaking and automatically the pen also had falling down. Then Rukmini Devi, she completely hurt, fainted. Then Krishna gives some water and servicing. Then after a couple of minutes, Krishna, yes, Rukmini Devi, she got her consciousness. Then Krishna told, hey Rukmini, why did you do this? How possible I give up to you? I never give up you. According to the Vedic culture, I married with you. The witness of Brahmana, the witness of fire, Ogni. How possible I give you? So, but Ogni Devi, Rukmini Devi, when Krishna just also used this word, has parihat, that is the laughing and joking. But in Madhur Juras, Krishna told, in my Braj Vrindavan, many times I also joked with the gopis. Then eh? time that if I tell, Then Gopi they are saying what? Madhava Madhava Jai Hari Hari Jai Madhava Jai Madhava Kai Tava Jai Dev Gosan Pa I'm not qualified just to touch at this point Then Hari Hari Mahi When Krishna said these things Then at once Gopi they say Get out! Madhava Jai Madhava Kai Tava cannot tell like that, oh, go, <laughs> very politely, oh. Now, other people, don't you speak, this is what the fluttering words. Again, next day, when Krishna meets with Srimati Radhika, then Krishna also told, why did you say these things? Madhava, Mahabhada, then our Acharya's explained very nice explanation. No, no, Srimati Radhika, she told. No, no, I did not say this. Madhava Jahi. That means, second meaning, Madhava, according to this Sanskrit word, that's called Dhab Dhatu. Dhab Dhatu means to run. Then, Dhabati, Dhabato, Dhabanti, Dhabaso, Dhabato, Dhabanti, Dhabati, Dhabato. According to this Sanskrit word, Dhab, Dhab Dhatu. That means to run. Then, horses. Run. Eh? Hot, run. This thing. So in the same way, Krishna told, Ma dhava. Ma means not. Dhava means you have to go. I am not your married wife. You have to leave me, but you have to go eh? slowly, slowly. Not running fast. In this way, our Acharya many meanings explain Ma dhava ja. In this way. Thank you. Good Priman. Now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told me, very briefly, I have told you all these rastattva. You should write more elaborately, elaborately. And he spied in Chaitanya Goswami Hall, and thus he wrote Bhakti Rasamri Sindhu, and especially Madhuryana, she explained in Ujjwal Neen Mani. Ujjwal Neen Mani, who is Ujjwal Neen Mani? Krishna and his gopi bhav, uh, gopi's uh, mood to serve Krishna. It is more Ujjwal. So he wrote with examples in a very simple way he wrote all these things and then he told oh Ru, now uh, Ru told that i want to be with you uh, to jagannath puri mahaprabhu told he said return you should go to vrindavan and after vrindavan you can come there and then mahaprabhu proceeded for in Paranasi. And he reached Varanasi and he was in the house of Tapan Mishra there. 
and how Sanatan Goswami met him. Oh, no, so that way. We are speaking very brief. Otherwise, it will go three, four, five days. <laughs> oh, today's drama also. Vajjanti Vilandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Shakshuna Manitam Yanita Smaya Shri Gurave Namaha Vamsha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripasin Rubyayvacha Aditanam Pavanibyo Vaishtaribyo Namo Namaha Taking the dust of my holy masters on my head, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Gogovinda Maharaj and Shri Gurudev, I will speak something. It is said that the life and characteristics of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is they are an ocean of nectar, only a drop of which can fully satisfy the mind and the ear. We have been hearing from the Lotus Mother of Guru Dev and you know, all, all the devotees so many beautiful stories. Now Guru Dev is asking how Mahaprabhu met with, or rather how Sanatana Goswami met with Sant Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Varanasi. Previously, before coming, going to Vrindavan, Mahaprabhu had wanted to go. If you remember reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the beginning of Madhya Lila, we have one great devotee, Nrishingananda Brahmachari. He heard Mahaprabhu is going to Vrindavan. So mentally he started to decorate the road with beautiful the line of trees and bushes, flower bushes, legs, pounds, nice guts, with very beautiful you know, birds and swans flowing there. And suddenly in his mind, he couldn't go further than a certain place. And he said, oh, Mahaprabhu will not go further than Kanai Natasha. And as a matter of fact, Mahaprabhu was going in that direction. When he came there, next to Kanai Natasha is one place called Rangkeli. In Rangkeli, Rup Sanatan were living in that area. Mahaprabhu stayed in the house of a Brahmin, Vidya Vishaspati, and so many crowds of people came to see him. Huge, huge crowds. Wherever he was going, they were following him. They would take the dust from where he was, he was putting his holy feet, making even holes in the ground. Thousands of people following him. He came to the house of that Brahmin, and then those two brothers were high-level ministers, no, first no, personal secretary and minister of Nawab Ushensha, the then the Muslim ruler of Bengal. They came with cloth around their neck and then straw so within their teeth, and they bowed down, giving full obeisances. And then very humbly, with folded hands, they said, Oh, we have come from abominable background. We are born in very low family. Our associates are very low. We are the lowest, but we have heard of the ways of your mercy. Please. Mahaprabhu, when he heard, he said, Please stop. Your humility is melting my heart. Please stop speaking like this. Then he said, You two are my eternal servants, my eternal associates. Very soon the Lord will deliver you. They had written to him previously a letter begging, stating their, their situation. So, in great affection, the Lord treated them like that. Then he told them very quickly, the Lord will deliver you. After he left, he went back to Puri. Because they advised him, Sanatana Goswami said, it is not very proper to go to Vrindavan with so many big crowds following you. It will spoil your mood in your pilgrimage. Better go another time with not so many people. Mahaprabhu listened to them and went back to Puri. Then, Guru Goswami gave his resignation from the government. And his brother Sanatan pretended to be sick. He stayed in his house and he, he hired many Brahmins and he was hearing from them Srimad Bhagavata. Now King Usensha was depending on them, they were his right and left hand man, so to speak. So after some times he was very furious, what's happening? One has given up his post and the other one says he's sick. So he sent someone to the house of Sanatana Goswami, so he's not sick at all. It was reported to him. He's only pretending to be sick and he's listening to Srimad Bhagavatam. So when he went, he personally went there and said, What are you doing? You're my main power in the South. Only with you I can you know, conquer and destroy Orissa. Of course, Sankhana Goswami as a great Vaishnava didn't want that to happen. He didn't have no power to do with it. And also he wanted to be with Mahaprabhu. So he didn't protest and he said, no, I will not follow your order, I will not serve you anymore. Vishen Shah threw him in jail. 
It was Dr. Angel. Don't you remember? Rupa Rup Goswami had resigned and he shared his wealth, gave half to the Brahmins, half to his relatives for the upkeep of Jiva Goswami and their own welfare. And the last quarter he kept for emergency. When he heard that his brother was in jail, he wrote him you know, a note in coded language saying, actually, I have kept 10,000 golden coins with a merchant. Now, you can hire you know, some other, convince your jailkeeper you know, to let you go. So Sandan Goswami was very respected by everyone, including the jailkeeper, who was a high post minister. So he started to speak very sweetly to the jailkeeper. Oh, please let me go. He said, oh, if I let you go, now my head will be cut. He said, no, no, you're a very great saint, I know. You're a very pious person. You're like a peer, you're like a, a Muslim saint. I just want to go to Hajj. I want to go to Mecca in pilgrimage. So if you help me, you will get also benefit. And if no, 10,000 golden coins can help convince you, maybe that's also. So the jailkeeper became very greedy and accepted the bribe. And he said, Sadhguru uh, Swami said, you just have to pretend that no, you took me outside not to answer net call, and some other I jumped in the Ganga with my shackles and an drawn and you couldn't see me anymore. So this happened like that. Sadhguru Swami left, and one of his servant Isha followed him and he was carrying some gold coins as everyone knows the story they were crossing the mountain very dangerous place and they came one night in one inn and in that inn there was one very smart person an astrologer he knew by his calculation oh he has those eight gold coins so he was thinking oh that night I will kill him and I will get the gold. Sanatan Goswami, who was a pure devotee, was inspired by the Lord. There's something wrong with your servant. So he went to his servant and said, Oh, are you carrying death with you? Are you carrying gold? He said, Yes, I have seven coins. Oh, please give them to me. So he took the seven coins and went to the uh, innkeeper and said, Oh, please help me cross the mountain. This is seven gold coins. When he saw this, the innkeeper was thinking, was saying, Oh, actually I knew you had eight gold coins and I wanted to kill you tonight. But you were so kindly offered you know, this gold. I will help you with my men to cross over. So, so he did. The next day, Dr. Swami told Isha, Actually, you, Isha, you told me that you had seven gold coins. Actually, you have one more left, right? You have eight. He said, Yes, I'll take it and go back to your house. Some or another, Sanatan Goswami went to Varanasi. And on the way, long, long way, his beard started to grow and his clothes were all torn. He came at the house of Chandra Shekhar, Otapan Mishra, where Mahaprabhu was staying inside. Mahaprabhu is a supreme lord, he knows everything, especially about his dear servants. So he told Chandra Shekhar, there is a great devotee who is just at the door, go and get him. At that time, he went out and he only saw this urchin look, no, looking like an urchin, like a Muslim you know, beggar, like a darvish. He said, no, no, there's only one you know, Muslim beggar at the door. Yes, yes, that's him, bring him inside. So Mahaprabhu got him inside and you know, Santan Goswami bowed at his feet. Mahaprabhu told him, oh, you go and shave, you know, clean, behave like a Vaishnava, you look like a darvish. Be Bhattara. Be Bhattara means be clean, be neat and clean. Not like hippies. Prabhupada, Prabhupada in the... Oh, you should also try to be like Sanatana Goswami followed. He said, this, this Malik Tika was, Sikha was there. I want to see all. I see so much. So many have bears, some money have, some nothing, no Tiki at all. Even in uh, Brahmacharya and those who are preachers, I see no, no Sikha. What we will have to do? This is Bhadravesh. Then Mahaprabhu welcomed his old servant and Chandra, no, he went to take a bath, he shaved, became Badra and he begged from Chandra Shekhar who was a householder some old cloth. So he came back in front of Mahaprabhu, very clean, you know, clean shaved, and head, shaved and beard 
and we're in this snow, the Hastavesh. But he had a very beautiful sadhu, there's some beggar with a very old torn quilt. And he said, please, give me your quilt against my chada. Are you making fun of me? Why are you, no, I'm a poor man. Why are you mocking me? No, no, I'm serious. Please give me your quilt. I will trade it for the... So practically forcibly, he took away the torn quilt and gave him his chada. And he came back with his torn quilt on the shoulder. Then my brother said, oh, you have given up your life attachment. Very good, I'm very pleased with you. After that, as we know, Mahaprabhu no, uh, instructed him on Dasha Shambhada Ghat, on the Ghat next to the Ganga, and this is Sanatan Siksha. I am not the speaker of this Katana, Ban Shakar Patarubhya Shah, Kripa Sanatan Siksha, Kripa Sanatan Siksha, Kripa Sanatan Siksha, Kripa After that, Sanatan Goswami asked him, Prabhu, I don't know who I am. And then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to give him Sambandha Gyan, Avidhe Gyan and Triyogyan. Vishnu Maharaj will listen. Om Gyana Timirandasya Giranjana Salataya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Bukham karoti vachalam pangulangayate girim Yekripa tamaham vande shivarodi natarine Our former respectful obeisances and our most beloved spiritual master Drama players should be ready On Vishnu Parastha Tarasat Shishimad Vibhranta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Then I offer my sasthanga to Prabhat Pranap to all Chidandi Sanyasi Gan Ahoru Puneo Gavagoriya Guru Varga Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis present here so today we're hearing something about Sanatan Shiksha, the instruction given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatan Goswami. So Sanatan Goswami very humbly inquired to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Kyaami keno jarata petrat iha nahi jani kemana hita hoy. Jehe Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who am I? I don't know who I am. Keno jarata petrat. Why am I experiencing the three types of suffering in this world? But I don't know, over here I don't know what is the greatest benefit for me. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you are a great Vaishnava. All these things are realized by you. You are not experiencing the uh, suffering of the threefold miseries known as Adi Atmika. Adi Daivaka and Adi Bhotika. Suffering which comes from other people. So many mosquitoes, so many animals, so many different people causing suffering to us, thieves, oh. robbers. Play, uh, speak clearly what you want to tell. Okay. I could not understand. Hare Krishna. Okay. <laughs> so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying to Sanatan Goswami that he is not experiencing these threefold miseries, the three types of suffering. The three types of suffering are Adi Atmika, or suffering that comes from one's own mind or oneself. Ashamhi param dhukam nirash nasha sadasuka. What a big cause of our suffering is we have so many desires. There's so many things that we want. When these things are not fulfilled, when we do not get our desires, then so much suffering is there, so much mental tension and stress. So this is one of the types of sufferings. Adi Atmika or suffering that comes from our own mind. The next type of suffering what Srila Sanatana Goswami is talking about is Adi Daivika. Adi Daivika is the suffering which comes from the devatas or the demigods. Like it's too cold, it's too hot, sunburns, typhoons, tsunamis, earthquakes. There's so many different things that happen from the demigods that are out of our control. Then the other type of suffering is called Adi Bhotika or suffering which comes from other living entities, from mosquitoes, from robbers, 
from thieves, so many different types of sufferings that come. So Srila Sanatana Goswami asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, first, who am I and why are we experiencing these types of suffering and what is the greatest benefit, what is our ultimate heat or kalyan benefit for the conditioned souls. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied that Jivara Swarup Hoy Krishna Nitya Das Krishna Tatasta Shakti Beda Beda Prakas that Jivara Swarup Hoy the Swarup or the eternal constitutional position Swa means self, self Rup means form so Swarup means original form so Jivara Swarup Hoy Krishna Nitya Das the eternal constitutional position or form of this jiva is, or the spirit soul is Krishna Nitya Das. He is the eternal servant of Sri Krishna. And where does he come from? He comes Krishna Tatasta Shakti Veda Veda Prakash. He is the part and parcel of Krishna. And he comes, he's a manifestation of Tatasta Shakti, or the marginal potency. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu further went to explain, how are we the Veda Abeda Prakash? How are we the part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Sri Krishna. Suryang Shukiran. The example is given like the particle in the ray of the sun. We see sometimes there might be the sun shining and there's a ray of light coming through the window and inside you can see um, like a sm small little particles floating around in this. In Shastra this is explained to be a particle of light. A particle of light which comes from the sun. Its existence, its supreme whole is in the sun but it's only a minute particle coming from that. So in the same way, the conditioned soul, or us, the jivatmas, we are part of the Supreme, but we are also separate and minute in power when Krishna Bhagavan, He is Supreme. The other ex example is given like, um, like a spark inside the fire. There's a great fire, and coming from the fire is one small spark. So the spark is considered to be the conditioned soul or us, the living entities, and the fire is Bhagavan. Our existence, the spark's existence, depends on the existence of the fire. But still it is separate, and in quality it's different, but in quantity, in quality it's the same, but in quantity it's different. So then, uh, so after explaining about the constitutional nature of, of, of the soul, then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to explain. You want to explain Bheda Bhed Prakash. What is the Bhed? What is the Bhed? What is Bhed and what is Abhed? The difference in. And this is called Achinta Bhed Abhed. So what is that? This, uh, Srila Gurudev is explaining this is known as Achincha Beda Beda Tattva or inconceivable, inconceivable oneness and difference from the, from, the, from the Supreme. Simultaneously oneness and difference. Inside the Jiva what is the same, we have the same, you could say propensity as Bhagavan as in that we have Swatantrata and Swetcha Moyeta. The jiva or the conditioned soul has our own individuality and the ability to desire. This is inherent within us and this is inherent within the Supreme. Also, our existence is dependent on the existence of the Supreme. Like um, we manifest it from Krishna even though we're eternally separate from Krishna. By having a separate existence, then this allows the um, as how is love and frame and relationship to be there. So that's why also Jeev is controlled by Maya and Krishna. There are so many differences and so many similarities. 
So, Srila Gurudev very clearly explained that we, the Jiva is Anu or very minute and small while as Bhagavan is Vibhu or very big and powerful. Also, Bhagavan manifests Maya Jagat or this material world. The Jiva, the conditioned soul, is controlled by Maya and but Bhagavan is not controlled by Maya. So these are some of the differences. What? Uh, Bhagavan is the controller of Maya. He has the power to control the material energy. Like this. Okay, so, so then, oh, then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu begins to also explain that there is three Shaktis. Chit Shakti, Maya Shakti, and Tatastha Shakti. That there is three energies of the Supreme. Chit Shakti is the eternal potency or the supreme abode of, the, of, of Bhagavan. This, how I like to see it, is like in the spiritual world, the whole spiritual realms that are manifest by Krishna, this is the Chit Shakti or his Antaranga Shakti, his internal potency. Then there is the Bahiranga Shakti or the external uh, Shakti, Maya Shakti. That's what we see in this world. Everything, the material worlds, whether old age, disease and death, these material worlds are Krishna's Maya Shakti or his external potency. And the other Shakti which is Tatashta or the Jiva Shakti is his marginal potency. The marginal potency is us. It has the ability to be either under the control and live in the spiritual world or in the Chit Shakti or it also has the ability to live in the material worlds or in Maya Shakti. But Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Aparayam Tassomanyam Prakritim Vidhime Param. He says that Jiva Bhuta Mahabaho Jayadam Dharyate Jagat. Right, cool. So, um, he, he says that the Jivatma, the conditioned soul, is of a superior nature to Maya. So then the question comes, um, why am I suffering in this world? Why are we in this material creation? He says, Krishna Bulli Sei Jeev Anadir Bahir Muk Atta Eva Maya Tare De Sang Sardu That Krishna Bulli Sei Jeev Anadir Bahir Muk that the jiva, the marginal potency, the conditioned soul, that's us. Bully say, uh, Krishna Bully has forgotten Krishna, has forgotten Bhagavan. Later on in Sanatan Shiksha will explain a lot about Krishna. But um, he is forgotten. Jiva Goswami explains that the this, this Sanskrit word, or Bengali word bully is a little bit different than our English word which means to forget. When we say forget, it generally means I knew something and then I forgot it. But in this case, in, in the language, forgetting means the absence of ever knowing it. We never had that relationship with Krishna. So in that context, we have forgotten Krishna. So Krishna bully Sejiv Anadir Bhavirmukh. And then in the next sentence, Anadir Bhavirmukh. Anadi. Since time immemorial, since before time existence, outside of material time, Bahir Mukh, our faces have been turned away from Krishna. Bahir Mukh, or we haven't been understanding our constitutional position or nature with, Shri, with uh, nature and relationship with Krishna. So we're Atayeva Mayatara Desam Sarduk, because this is not natural for us. Because Jiva Sarup Hoy Krishna Nitidas, because our Sarup, our natural inherent constitutional position is as a servant of Krishna, and because we're not doing that, Atayeva Maya Tarakri Sam Sarduk. Because we're not doing that, Maya is taking us and making us suffer so much in this sangsar or this material creation. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains sometimes we're born in Swarga like Indra, the king of heaven, enjoying so much. Sometimes we're in the lowest hellish planets, sometimes like a king, sometimes like a servant. So many different births, 8 million, 400,000 species of life. We're doing habudubu in Bengali. Habudubu means like when there's a king and there's someone who's really bad, they take them and they put their head underwater, half drown them, then pick them up, they take a gas pepper, then put them down, that up and down, and their life is so much suffering. Waterboarding, Mother Marge calls it. 
<laughs> so in this world we're habuduhu katsha means we're we're sometimes suffering so deep lower species of life sometimes we're getting some temporary enjoyment and this is going on what? Yeah. Why is this? Because bhayam vityam avini vesha tasyad ishadate tasya vi pargyos meter tan maya the abha jettam bhak taika yesham guru deva tattva bhayam dvitiyam we are experiencing fear so much fear we're not getting happy so much fear we are in this world I don't think we need to describe that or wear it but bhayam dvitiyam avini vesha tasyad why? Because we have absorption in dvitya or something which is secondary, something which is not real. We are absorbed in maya, in maya. We're absorbed in this material world which is not our constitutional position. And because of this, we are suffering so much and experiencing so much fear. Saying what has happened is actually constitutionally Bhagavan or the Supreme Personality of Godhead his job is to be the enjoyer he stays in the spiritual world has fun and enjoys that's his job our job is to serve Krishna Nitya Das or to be the eternal servant and facilitate that happiness but when we come into this world we get a vipargyo, vipargyo everything switches around and we think that now it's I'm supposed to be in the joyer and instead of serving Bhagavan, we try to become his competitor. We try to see how this ha can make me happy and how everybody can be engaged in my service. We have this Purusha Abhiman. But those Tanmaya Yato Buddha Abhajatam Bhaktai Kayesham Gurudeva Tatma, it says, so what does an intelligent person do? Buddha Abhajatam of an intelligent person worships Maya or worships Shri Krishna and takes shelter of a pure Sat Guru respecting him like his life and soul and his very heart and by doing this he is able to transcend over this material world Sanatan Goswami and this Mahaprabhu dialect in three chapters it has been given. You should hear. Oh, you should hear. <coughs> he asked Chaitan, um, Sanatan Goswami, Ke Ami Keno Mare Jarata Patra Iha Nahi Jani Koise Hoyta. Oh, first is that who I am, I, the relation with Krishna and other things, this is Sambandha Gya. And Jarita Petra, why? Because we have forgotten Krishna. This is how we can be over, come from this, or oh, by Sadhu Guru Vaishnav, Sadhan Bhaja, Abhidheta. Kaise hi tahai? Oh, this is Priyujan Tattva. Kaise hi tahai? By Dasa Sakka Vasal Labhav, and in the end, Madhu, Mad, and Madhurena Samapayati. Oh, so, Sanatana Goswam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Finish. But it is very, very long. In very brief, we have discussed. If any time other, we will discuss more about Rup Sanatan and the life of Sri Haridas Thakur. Oh, very, very excellent. And the Charitra for Aghunath Das Goswami heart has been told in Chaitra. We will discuss all these things. Next time. Go from now. We are giving rest to Hari Katha today. And tomorrow, what is the program?
Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, prepare for drama. <laughs> Tomorrow a number of buses will be leaving for the airport. The first bus is leaving at 6 o'clock. And the uh, times that I'm mentioning, you got to consider that that is the time the bus is leaving. You should be there at least a quarter of an hour earlier because a lot of people will have to be loading their luggage, etc. So please be there on time. The first bus is leaving at 6 o'clock. The next one at 8 o'clock, another one at 12 o'clock, and the last one is leaving at 1500 hours or 3 o'clock in the afternoon precisely. On Saturday, only one bus is leaving at 6 o'clock. Uh, after Prasadam tonight, the uh, list of all the devotees who are leaving with the buses will be ready so you can have a look at that list at the office outside in front of the gate on the right side, not at the reception room. Uh, check out is noon time, so 12 o'clock. By 12 o'clock you have to have left your rooms. And please keep it clean and tidy and take your, all of your belongings with you. Prabhu, one second. Srila Gurudev is just going for one minute to the bathroom. Please don't panic. We are coming back. And let Gurudev easily go there. Don't disturb. Thank you. You know, Gurudev will be coming back in a moment. Srila Gurudev will be coming here tomorrow. The program will start at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with Srila Gurudev also. There are a number of lost and found items that have not yet been picked up. For example, the, the people living the people living in the room A8, will they please stand up? Anyone here that is occupying the room A8, please stand up. A8. No one here? Okay, you can also come to the office and uh, pick up a key that you've lost. I'm holding it here in my hand. Key for A8, okay. And then we have a uh, walkie-talkie here by the brand name of Brandi, Brandi. Please come and pick that up. And the, uh, another announcement is that, that, and another translation machine, a Len translation machine, who has lost that? Sorry? Just bring it to the office. Anyway, further items you can bring to the office, please. Last announcement is that uh, the Hare Krishna festival in Wales this year has had a change of date. It is going to take place on the 4th and 5th of July. That was the Hare Krishna festival in Wales, 4th and 5th of July. Thank you, Hare Krishna. The festival is free. And it's for everyone in our Sangha and every street is for soul. So please support us by coming and participating in this festival. It will be attended by Bon Maharaj, Vaishnava Maharaj and Giri Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, just a very quick announcement. I think on the first day I mentioned that in um, Sri Gorgavinda Godimat in Birmingham, we're having a Bhagavad Gita seminar. So maybe some people did not hear at that time. We're having a two-month Bhagavad Gita seminar. It's especially meant for those who are new to Krishna consciousness, who want to develop a fundamental understanding of Bhagavad Gita. It will start from June 29th till the first week of September. It's practically filled up, but if anybody's interested and can come for two months or one month, then if they can come and see me, then we might be able to fit in maybe one or two more people. I'm leaving right after the play, so if anybody has an interest, if they can come and see me right away. Thank you. And humble guests, please shortly listen to our humble request. The banner of Prema will manifest on this stage very soon. A play 
risen from the ocean of Harry's sectarian pastime, like a moon. His rays will splendidly illuminate Vrindavan's lofty vine, gifted to those begging for the holy name sublime. Don't think it an entertainment sharing mundane taste, rather a time to hear and absorb the transcendental reality with faith. Like a bouquet of flower, may the Acharya's words and emotions become a decoration for your ears, nourishing your deep devotion. attracts the mind of Krishna, who enchants the minds of everyone in the universe. Hmm, oh, Sarika, through the fire of Krishna's strength, the insect-like demons were burned to ashes. He enjoyed dancing on the hoods of the Kaliya serpent and carried Govardhan Hill on just one finger to curb Indra's pride. Who could compete with Krishna, the lifter of Govardhan Hill? Shabbat, you don't understand. It's Lord Vishnu who gave Krishna his wonderful power, being pleased with Nanda Maharaji's worship. Only a fool praises Krishna. Govardhan Hill was pleased with the food offered to him by the people of Raj and lifted himself into the air. Krishna just had to stand under him and now the whole world praises him as Govardhan Thai. My dear Sari, Tell me, who is more beautiful and merciful than Sri Krishna? He who carries a flute that stuns the rivers and enchants the whole world. Jai Sri Krishna! You, so, sh you, Shuk, don't know the mercy of my mistress. Wherever she casts her compassionate glances, there the lotus flowers blossom. And wherever she extends her mild smile, there she distributes nectar. Your Krishna is only Madame Mohan, whereas my Radharani is Madame Mohan Mohini. 
Krishna doesn't know the strength of Radharani's love. He cries and prays for this love, which is so pure and selfless, selfless it completely overwhelms him. See, Shok, there is Vrinda Devi. My dear Paris, I have drank your clever words to the cups of my ears. Now, stop quarreling and just see what will manifest.
Krishna are one person in two bodies. They are like a pair of lotus flower, one blue and the other yellow. Or like two flames on the wick of a single oil lamp. If the wind of separation makes those flames flicker or fall, their gopi friends quickly come and protect them. The Saki sweetly tell Radharani and Krishna about their great love for each other when they are separated and thus increase their loving attachment. Externally, Radhika may reject Krishna, but internally, Krishna is always in the heart of Radhika. What more can I 
Thank you. 